Okay. Hi, Meghna. I am so happy to see you and I'm so excited to read your book. I just, it's, it's, it's truly unputdownable. I don't know if there is a word like that exists. I've been using that word as well. So let's hope Haan. it exists. Because <laughs> whenever I yeah. put that word, uh, se spell check aa jata hai. so I don't know if there is a word like that, but it is truly unputdownable. I can't just stop reading it. So I took this pause to have a word with you, have a talk with you to tell our viewers about this book, about this phenomenal book called Bo Boys Don't Cry. Now, tell me about this title. I mean, yes. And here's my Kindle. So, oh, great. Good to see you on Kindle. <laughs> NRI's well. NRI's 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 from a lot of men that I know, I've heard this, I've heard the sentence. Yeah. So tell us why boys don't cry. Why is it such a big deal for boys to cry? And what is this about? Tell I me, we, what do you think? We basically, uh, you know, we dehumanize our boys. We keep talking about female emancipation, but patriarchy has been unjust to boys as well. I mean, you tell boys mm -hmm. when they're growing up, you can't wear pink, you can't dance, you can't cook. Uh, you're putting boys into little boxes just the way we pay you're putting girls into little boxes now i'll give you an example even in today's modern era i have two girls and if i put them in pants or you know a little bit uh, of blue clothes or boyish clothes or i don't let their hair grow long uh people will actually comment that you know why if i make them play with like you know toys that are uh, traditionally male like cars or you know action figures Till today, people will comment. So, you know, we're putting boys and girls into little boxes and gen putting them into stereotypes even before they've had the time to define themselves and what they want to mm. be. So let's remove those gender stereotypes from both men as well as women. So boys don't cry, but in this book, it's not about men versus women or any of that. It's just about uh, a person trapped in an abusive uh, marriage and how they get out of it. So it, it's actually unisex. It can happen to anyone because after the books come out, I've got messages from men also saying that we've been abused. So it's a it's a universal thing, unfortunately, and it just captures the the relationship. It's not about you know this gender versus that gender at all. So where did this title come up to? I mean, have you have you really seen boys crying, or do you really think uh, that uh, you know? Crying is something that is very stereotypical uh, in that sense. I mean, uh, no, I've seen, I've had very uh, amazing uh, male role models in my life. Like my brother, Saurabh Pant, is a very inspiring yes. uh, role model and icon. Uh, I saw him follow his passion. Just bring a smile on my face when I hear his name. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so seeing him, like he, he let go of all kind of stereotypes and followed his heart. He followed his dreams. He pursued his passion. At a time when there was no stand-up comedy also in this country. So, you know, he, he listened to, uh, to his own voice and he believed in himself and it's paid off. So, I was not like that. I was very conventional. I did an MBA. I worked in a corporate job. And it's only like looking at him, having a powerful male role model helped me to also leave, quit my full-time job and follow my dreams and my passion and become a writer. So, I've had very powerful. My father's an amazing guy. I put up a reel of him on uh, Insta where he's singing. So he retired as chief commissioner of income tax from Calcutta, but uh, singing was his passion and he, you know, pursued it and he was always called on stage whenever, when we were growing up as kids. So watching him go up and, you know, again, own his talent was a big uh, confidence booster for my brother and me while we were growing up. My husband is an amazing person. He's such a gentle, uh, evolved soul, you know, such a good human being. So I've had a lot, and a lot of my male friends also, they've been such positive influences in my life. And on the same time, I have amazing female friends and amazing female icons in my life, like my mother, my nani ji and all. But I've also had bad experiences with women. So you never know, right? It's uh, it's really, it's not the gender, it's just a human being. Very well put. So like I was saying before this, your book has actually kind of hit the nail on its head and has not lived and has not left any stones unturned you know most of the social issues that we talk about these days be it girls marriage divorce uh, domestic violence mental health i mean these are such big pillars of discussion these days in media and all over and your book just revolves around these issues so beautifully woven into a fictional, mostly like you had put in, uh, or true story almost. Uh, 
and it's so nicely interwoven around these uh, you know important topics so i will go one by one first i will read yeah. your line about sati and marriage where you describe uh, menika who is the lead character who kind of reflects you i believe and uh, and she says that i i had asked a historian about sati what yeah. did those women feel walking into the funeral pyre of their dead husbands did they go mad in those final moments with the realization of their own insignificance and then the historian replied sati was not suicide for them but a celebration their sacrifice validated society's joy my marriage was my sati you said i mean this was such a refreshing line so tell us what is your idea of marriage and the unnecessary pressure that a woman has about marriage and also the fact that to call off a marriage when it is like the invitations have been given all the preparations have been done i mean it's it's such a relatable thing you know i'm i'm sure a lot of women go through this so tell us about your idea of marriage what do you see in a marriage what what is your idea of a good marriage or successful marriage so to say uh you know i've been in a very bad marriage and i'm i've also now in a very good marriage and the one lesson i've learned is that there has to be a lot of respect uh and the person has to love even the worst things about you you know i was previously married to a man who hated even the best in me and i'm now married to a man who loves even the worst in me and i think that kind of sums up what is a good marriage versus a bad marriage uh so just don't be with some don't get married just to tick a box because in today's world uh there's no point you don't have to get married i know I have most a lot of my friends are not married uh, they're living very happy fulfilling lives uh and on the other hand i've got friends who are also happily married but also who are unhappily married so just def- own your life define what happiness means to you define what companionship means to you if you find a person worthy of the institution of marriage then go ahead and get married own that you know tradition is not bad is just you have to figure out you know what works for you in considering your personality your lifestyle your aspirations and then work around that tradition is it's not bad to get married it's not you know that's not how it works so it's about you as a person and uh, what love what you want from love and what you want from marriage and if you don't also if you want to reject those emotions also that's also perfectly good just be happy and find the person that, uh, who gives you the kind of love that you deserve i think that's the one message i'll take away always always fight for the love that you seek and the love that you deserve that brings me directly to my next question what according to you is love because i'll read this line that it, that really touched me the need to be loved is so strong that we choose it above the need to be right i mean the fact that uh, we as human being are so hungry for love uh, appreciation acknowledgement yeah. and all these emotions and we we definitely put a burden of lot of these expectations on our partner so what is love according to you especially and also the difference between love and adoration which you put like so nicely the way the yeah. character of sunit um you into uh, you describe as that his adoration he mis- mistook as love and yeah. probably a lot of us don't know what what love is and what is a realistic expectation of love in a marriage let's say so i would always advise people that unless you know yourself don't fall in love because until you know yes. yourself you'll never recognize or understand what it is that you need from a partner so your partner is not sort of training center for you to become a better person you are the training center for you to become a better person so fall in love uh, do conventional things like marriage only once you are ready to fall in love with yourself so once you embraced yourself once you've embraced who you are with all your fundamental flaws we are all fundamentally flawed human beings right none of us are perfect and we shouldn't strive for perfection but uh, once you love yourself then no but you'll get a the universe will contrive to make the love that you deserve come to you second if it doesn't also you don't have to it doesn't have to be romantic love there's so many uh mediums and forms of love today love can be being obsessed with writing for example you know pouring your heart and soul into a book that's love or owning a pet and pouring your heart and soul and giving all that love that you have to a pet so why do we define love in such you know conventional ways of acha romantic love is only love the love of a child if you adopt a child and live with the child as a single parent that's also love so let's break out this definition on these narrow you know blinders and boxes that we put love in that 
love is equals romantic love and expand our definition it can also be just self love i mean if you love yourself isn't that the greatest gift of all so love yet we have a very short life and you know if we don't fill it with love whether it's self love whether it's romantic love whether it's love for your job love for a pet love for a friend love for a parent whatever it is that's all that we are sent down here for because it's just literally the centerpiece of human emotion